Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, in clinical practice, um, it is considered as a contraindication to acute left atrial appendage, or LAA, uh, with a thrombus inside. However, there are rare clinical circumstances in, as uh, in the present case that LAA occlusion is needed despite persistence of thrombus. While doing this, of course, there is a concern of this thrombus dislodgement. However, to prevent this, um, which safety measures in terms of procedural technique are recommended are not fully defined in textbooks. Um, and uh, we found them in several case reports uh, in a limited number. Uh, some of these measures were described previously in some reports and some in another. Uh, in this case, we combined them in a whole manner, and actually, some of the safety measures are completely new. Uh, this is my uh, disclosure. Uh, the patient is a 59 years old man with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and permanent atrial fibrillation. He had a vitreous hemorrhage in the eye while on treatment with warfarin. Uh, the ophthalmologist did not recommend to reinitiate any oral anticoagulant because of high bleeding risk. Thus, he was referred for percutaneous occlusion of LAA. Uh, at first, a pre intervention T's and CT scan were performed. However, as you, um, can I go there? I can't show it in your screen, but you see that there is a mobile thrombus. Uh, in T, pre-interventional T, and it seems um, a fresh thrombus in the middle of LAA with an impending risk of embolism. So after extensive discussion with the patient about risks and benefits, we decided to perform left atrial appendage occlusion with some modifications from the standard uh, procedure. Uh, of course, it is not the scope of the present presentation. Um, these modifications, um, in other words, safety measures to prevent dislodgement which are in seven in numbers, are as follows. Number one, uh, filter devices, uh, which were embossed in this case, were placed for each carotid artery to prevent stroke in case of inadvertent dislodgement. Of course, we recognize it would be better to use a dedicated cerebral protection system like Sentinel, if available. The second one is, uh, it is also true for standard case, but since manipulations to achieve coaxial alignment should have been kept at a minimum in this case. We paid even more attention than usual to achieve puncturing for cervix from the posterior and inferior region. Uh, in this view, you see the bicoval view showing the exact inferior, and short axis view showing the exact posterior region. Number three, uh, the transeptal puncture was facilitated by the style of the broken brow needle, or could be the back end of a coronal Y, of course, to release tension on the catheter because the puncture assembly might possibly jump into LA like a slingshot when popped across the septum, as shown here. This is a, another case. It jumps, and we do not want this to occur. This is especially of importance in case of a thick or floppy septum. And uh, after puncture, you see the transeptal shift across the septum and in flora and in T. And now, this number four, um, a pigtail shaped wire which is less likely to enter LLA inadvertently was used for sheet exchange in the body of left atrium instead of in the left upper pulmonary vein with a stiff wire because um, uh, interventionists uh, assume that LUPV is around here, but there is anatomical variations and close relationship with the LAA, and it may inadvertently enter the LAA. So, um, we used um, in our wire in the present case. Uh, alternatively, it could be a safari or confida wire, and we exchanged the shift in the body of the left atrium, not in the left upper pulmonary vein. Alternatively, one could prefer to use um, uh, shift exchange in LUPV under guidance of 3 dt um, but if you, it is not available, 2DT may be also misleading. Obviously, we did not cannulate um, LAA with a pigtail catheter or delivery shield. And number six, we avoided to use contrast injection to delineate LAA anatomy. All measurements were performed by T. Actually, 
This is the standard views of Scopia uh, fluoroscopy. Um, actually, fluoroscopic views can be rotated clockwise in 90 degrees as imaginary, like this. And these correspond to the T images of LAA in short and long axis, respectively. So we focused on these images in our procedure. Uh, <clears throat> we used amulet device in this case. Uh, amulet has an, um, as you know, a, a opening order. Uh, at first, it's a ball shape, then triangular shape, and the lobe. It is easy to view the ball shape configuration in T. We can be sure that it is the uh, distal part of the assembly. So we are sure uh, by visualizing this relatively atraumatic uh, ball configuration in the left atrium near the ostium of the appendix by focusing on T images, the delivery sheet can be advanced carefully into the neck of LAA without touching to the thrombus. And lastly, number seven. In case of a need for repositioning, the device was recaptured only partially to reveal the triangular shape, not to the ball shape again, inside the LAA without getting back into the left atrium. By its bigger area than ball as depicted here, a triangular shape could maintain trapping the thrombus behind it if it's touched inadvertently. In this video, you see the stage of recapturing. First, the disc of the device is recaptured, then the lobe, then the triangular shape, and the lastly, the ball. As stated before, we stopped at the triangular stage. Here is our case. This, this is the first attempt for deployment. Let's watch it. But as you see, there is an unpleasing appearance. So we captured, recaptured it and advanced it a bit further, focusing on T. Here at the second attempt, we achieved a correct position and shape. And uh, finally, after verification of the five stability signs, the device was successfully deployed without complications as demonstrated here in Biflora and 3DT. This is a fast view of the disc uh, with a nice ceiling of the ostium, and this is a surgical or the upper LA view of the disc. Conclusions, in a needed clinical situation, Percutaneous occlusion of LAA with a thrombus may be feasible. And some modifications from the standard implantation procedure are of most importance in terms of efficacy and safety. Thank you. Great case, very innovative. Um, any questions? Uh, do th I know that you use the amulet. Uh, do you think that you can use the SEM, uh, like a um, Watchman device for the SEM, uh, if you have a thrombus there, or is it because of amulet specific techniques, you can use only amulet uh, device here? Yeah, actually, I guess that this question will be asked, and so I have a <laughs> slide for it. You know that Watchman has. Um, Watchman is not feasible with the first generation. Uh, this technique is not feasible because the delivery sheet has to be advanced into the LAA until its marker aligns with the ostium. But we should not enter the, inside the LAA. But the newer generation, Watchman FLX, uh, has some new features uh, compared to previous one relating to this issue. It has a closed end up and it has a ball like similar to amulet, and it can be used also. Um, and lambre also can be used with this no-touch technique, but in Turkey, we have only amulet. The other uh, devices has a reimbursement issue. <laughs>